the peace that comes from God's forgiveness. Lord, Lord, please direct me to a subject that you want me to study. I waited. I listened. And uh, I was looking once again through some of the resources I have on hand. And the Lord said to me, there is great peace in knowing that you are forgiven. Let's turn to John 7, 53 through 8, 12. So I started to read. And everyone went to his own house. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Note, Jesus spent the night outdoors because he had no home of his own. Sometimes he spent time at friends' homes, but often he spent time in the night outdoors. Now, early in the morning, he came again to the temple. And all the people came to him, and he sat down and he taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now, Moses in the law commanded us that we should that she should be stoned but what do you say this they said testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him but jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear you know i've always wondered what he wrote on the ground maybe it was the accuser's names and a list of their sins. Just maybe. I have kind of thought that. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw the first stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, and were probably looking at what he was writing on the ground, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus has raised himself up and saw no one but this woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? And she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. In effect, Jesus was saying, I forgive you, but I don't condone your sin. Repent and sin no more. Many of us struggle with God's forgiveness because, because of our past, or things we may be doing now, or not doing now that we should be doing. His forgiveness is so wonderful, we have a hard time understanding it, that God would forgive a sinner such as I, Dave Ralph in Langley, B.C., when we do get a hold of it, he gives us his peace and his joy. His forgiveness is the key to freedom. There are two types of people who need forgiveness. Those who have done a lot of wrong and those who have done very little wrong. Like my wife Arlene, who's been raised as a Christian child and has done very little wrong. How do we receive forgiveness? 
point number one. We admit that we were wrong. In John 8, 30, he says, as he spoke these words, many believed on him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples. Indeed, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Are we willing, whether believers or non-believers, to go to God and, that, and admit that we need his forgiveness? Are we willing? His freedom and his peace need them in our lives? We can go to him at any time and ask him to show us if there is anything in our lives that is displeasing to him and needs correction. Yes, you see that if we are not willing to admit to the Lord any big or small sins in our lives, then he cannot forgive us and give us his freedom and peace. In Proverbs 28, he who covers his sins will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. In 1 John 1, 8 and 9, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. His forgiveness and his peace, are we willing to humble ourselves for? Let us read the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector in Luke 18. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I, fact, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. The tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, forgiven rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Forgiven, the tax collector was forgiven, not because of good works, but because of a humble confession. So how do we receive forgiveness? Number two, we accept full and free forgiveness. We accept it. In what we were reading about the woman, Jesus, the Son of God, the ruler of the universe, said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin mo no more. Yes, we were all sinners when we accepted Jesus as our Savior. But there may be areas in our lives that we still need to bring to him. In Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace 
through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Justified, a great word. We say it just as if I'd never sinned. Justified. <clears throat> we come to him in confession and faith. Now we must accept in our hearts that he has forgiven us. Sometimes this might be hard to do. We need to believe in his forgiveness so he can reward and bless us with his peace. There may be times when it's still harder to forgive ourselves. We might ask ourselves, how could I have done that? Or how could I have even thought that? What kind of a Christian am I? Have you ever thought that way? The chimes of time ring out the news. Another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone you? You may have longed for added strength, your courage to renew. Do not be disheartened, for I have news for you. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. <clears throat> Let us read a few words of scripture together. Daniel 10, and he said, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be to you, be strong, yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak for you have strengthened me. Yes, indeed, when he speaks to us, whether verbally or through other Christians or through the Bible, we are strengthened and fear subsides. In Romans 1, Beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Second Corinthians 7, therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Psalm 29, the Lord will give strength to you, his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. One thing I've noticed over time, and that is you can't outgive the Lord. If one invests time in Bible study and reading, somehow you always have time to do the things that you have to do. If you give to God through the church 
or give to others who are in need, God always provides for your financial needs. I can give you personal examples of this. Psalm 72. In his days the righteous shall flourish and in abundance of peace. Proverbs 16. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. Isaiah 9. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. The exciting thing is, we don't have to wait. We can enjoy his blessing and his peace right now as we draw closer to him, entering more fully into his kingdom now. <clears throat> I challenge you, therefore, to get to know him better. I challenge you to spend time in his presence and therefore have his peace multiplied unto you. Now, to him who is able to fill your life with his peace. May he also make his countenance to shine upon you and give you his joy. Amen and amen. Should you want to get in touch with me, you can through Home Church Langley on YouTube or by email at dave hyphen arlene a r l e n e at telus.net. Thank you for your time. <laughs>